Hello my friend, it's 2023 and there's never been a better time to make music from your home studio than right now. So let's kick things off by busting some New Year home studio myths. And the first myth that I want to bust is that you can't record and mix and complete and release a song as well from a home studio as you can from a pro studio. In 2023, that just simply is not true. There are countless acts out there making hits from their bedroom home studios, releasing them and having great success. Also, there's so many of the pro uh, producers and engineers and mixers out there who are selling up their gear, selling out their studios and choosing to mix much more or indeed entirely from inside the box. What does that tell you about where the industry is going? 100%, this is the golden age of home studio and bedroom production. The next home studio myth that I wanna bust in 2023 is that auto-tune is just plain bad. Now, auto-tune I think gets a bad rap from people that are outside the production circle. It gets the butt of quite a lot of jokes for people that just don't necessarily understand how auto-tune works. And I think auto-tune is such a great tool uh, used in the right hands for many different ways. You know, if you want to use it artistically, pushed it, uh, pushing it hard, or if you just want to use it subtly just to correct and polish a vocal, uh, it can be a really, really wonderful tool. The only time where I think auto-tune doesn't have its place is when it's in the wrong hands and it's just used um, without much thought. And the example of an album I would put for this would be like Michael Bublé's Christmas album. <laughs> Michael Bublé is a great singer and uh, arguably doesn't really need auto-tune. should be able to get it sounding, I think, pretty decent in the studio in just a number of takes. Why that album in particular has just got auto-tune slapped all over it so he sounds like a robot, I don't know. It ruins the whole record. So auto-tune in 2023 is a great tool. It doesn't deserve the bad rep that it gets and uh, the butt of all jokes. Uh, I use auto-tune a lot and I love using it just don't like hearing it when it ruins records and it's applied with no thought. The next myth that I want to bust in 2023 is that analog hardware sounds way, way better than uh, analog emulation plugins. And in 2023, these plugins are getting better and better and better and sounding just simply superb. Over the last decade, these emulation plugins have just improved and improved and improved uh, to the point that uh, these days they just sound fantastic. Now I haven't used loads and loads and loads of the hardware so I don't have, I haven't had a career where I've used the hardware say for 20 years and now I've moved on to plugins so I can really have a good uh, all round A being of them in terms of my work practice. But what I do know is that these plugins, a lot of these plugins just sound superb. And unbelievably with um, plugin producers like Analog Obsession, you can get your hands on some excellent uh, analog uh, emulation plugins for absolutely free. So not only do you get ben the benefit there of the, the sound uh, of the plugins uh, and a lot of the warmth and a lot of what uh, you love about the records that you've loved and grown up listening to, which I think is actually really key and possibly even more important than having experience of actually using the hardware itself. It's that you've got used to the sound. So we all know the sound that we're after and using these uh, plugins and emulations that we use on those records makes absolute sense. But it also allows us to have the workflow of using uh, these analog style plugins, which is something I talk about a lot in my courses uh, and material. If you want to know more about that, check out my free seven steps uh, to musical mixing. It's a free uh, guide you can grab right now. The link's down in the description. And of course, when it also comes to plugins, not only do they sound fantastic these days, but when it comes to cost and maintenance, it's an absolute no-brainer. It's why producers and mixers like uh, Andrew Sheps, uh, you find stories of them selling out their gear and talking about working now entirely inside the box. The next myth that I want to bust in 2023 is that if you want to go professional, you're going to need to go to college or university to study within the industry. And in 2023, it's simply just not true. Now, I'm not bashing anybody that uh, does want to or has gone to college or university. You're gonna learn a whole heap of stuff and it's gotta be a good thing. But it's absolutely not essential. Indeed, I know a whole a heap of people that have uh, gone to the University of Life, as it were, uh, to study music and have gone on uh, to do absolutely fantastic things. And in 2023, there's just never been a better time to consume 
uh, knowledge. There's a whole load of stuff on my channel. You can sign up, you can get uh, weekly tips and home studio know-how straight to your inbox. Uh, you've got free courses, more free material, and I've got paid courses out there too. And that's just my channel alone. YouTube is huge and it's booming within the music industry. There's a load of people sharing their knowledge. So many fantastic channels. And of course, working uh, via email, working over the internet, you can advertise your services, you can get out there and you can exchange files and actually do work via the internet and get experience all from the comfort from your home studio. So in 2023, you don't need to go and study, you don't need to put down money anywhere. You can do everything from the comfort of your home studio. That's pretty cool. The next myth I wanna bust in 2023, and it's one I hear actually sadly quite a lot, is that there's too much music in the world and with streaming hardly paying artists anything, what's the point of making it in the first place? Now I wanna say in 2023, that's quite a blinkered view. There are so many opportunities out there outside of just streaming, which I agree isn't ideal. And I know there's a lot of campaigning at the moment to get that uh, sorted out more in the favor of the artist, and I'm all for that. But there's also an awful lot of potential revenue um, as an artist, as a musician, working from your home studio. I mean, there's so many things that we can get involved with and do just on the social media front to get uh, music out there and to get our work out there, to advertise our services. It can be actually a bit overwhelming and mind boggling. The most important thing is the same back in the 50s as it is right now in 2023. Is if you wanna get on, you just gotta do stuff. And the final myth that I wanna bust is that you shouldn't write uh, arrange, record, mix, and master, and release uh, a song all on your own because you're just gonna be a jack of all trades and spread yourself too thin, and it's just not gonna end up being very good. And I, there is nothing wrong if you're an artist with uh, wanting to learn everything about that whole process. I think it's a great thing. Now, if you wanna actually work within the industry, I would probably more recommend choosing one or maybe two of those areas that you really wanna focus in on if you wanna make that your career. But if you're an artist and if you enjoy the whole process and you wanna learn more, there's nothing wrong with doing it. And I've heard artists get incredible results. They're just working as a one person team from their home studio. So in 2023, with all of the mechanics in place to be able to do that, um, with all the wonderful resources, even things like online mastering, which might take a bit of the heat out of the process for you. In 2023, you can literally do the whole lot just from your home studio, and that is awesome. Okay, so that's my 2023 home studio myths busted. What home studio myths have I missed? Is there one that really bugs you? Drop it down in the comments section below. Thanks for checking this one out. Do remember to like, subscribe. Most importantly, go have yourself a great day.